Good morning, Charlene. Good morning, Christine. Hey, Sarah Jane. Oh, sorry, Rabina. Yep, I'll get him to do that again for you today. Yep, no problem. I'll get him to do that right now. Go ahead. talk to him now. everybody it's Paula here from Craftables thanks so much for joining me today um, we'll get started uh, now for those that have bought the kit you will have um, a set of instructions like this which is our cutting guide so we're trying to get the most that we can out of that paper um, so I have done this guide for you to show you the different sizes and stuff so we'll go through that together now if you've done it already, that's great. You can go ahead and rough up the edges around there if you want to. If you haven't done it and you want to follow me through, we'll do that now. So here's our page. Um, we've got a little bit of inking around here. So if you have an ink pad um, of any colour that you like, it doesn't have to be the same one as what I've used. I did use the Distress Ink Bundle Sage for my one, but you can use whatever colour that will look nice with your photo. You can match it with your photo. If you don't know what photo you want to use just yet, that's fine. You can add the ink colour later. Okay, so let's get started. Right, so first of all, we'll start with um, cutting this piece down. So we'll get all this prepped up first, and then we'll go ahead and do that cutting out. So if you want to grab your trimmer or a pen and a pencil and a ruler, I just want you to measure in one inch around all of these corners. Sorry, I'll see if I can. There we go. So cut in one inch around all these edges, and we're going to cut that middle piece out for your photo mat. Now, don't forget to cut this border off first, or otherwise your measurement is going to be all wrong. <laughs> so we'll cut that down to 12 inches. Okay. So we're just going to measure in one inch on all of these sides, from all the sides, draw a box in the middle, and we're just going to cut that box out in the middle. I'm going to do mine on my trimmer, so if you want to do that, go ahead. I'm just lining up one side at the one inch there. And then I've got these inches down the side here, so I'm going to line it up at one inch, and then I'm going to bring my trimmer blade to my one inch there. So I'm just going to pop it onto the one inch, and I'm going to... Bring it all the way down to 11 inches, and that'll give me my one inch cut there. So I'm going to turn it around again, bring it to one inch, bring my blade to one inch on this side here, and then we're going to pull it down till we get to 11 inches again, and just carry on doing that on all four sides. There we go. So the last side there. You can do this with a different trimmer. The trimmer I've got you, it will do the exact same thing. Most trimmers already have measurements down the side here as well. So you just need to make sure that you lift your blade up and bring it down to the one inch. Don't start from up here and bring it down, otherwise you'll cut this piece here. So just lift it up, bring it down to your one inch and cut all the way down to the 11. There we go. So this piece we're going to put aside and we're going to cut our 
photo mat out of that one a bit later. So don't throw this bit away, we're going to use that for later. Okay, so the next one we're going to put that aside and the next one I want you to grab is this one here. This one here, so this is the one with that bit of blue on the side, uh, it's actually called the Tourist, so if you've got that one grab that. Trim this border off along here, don't forget you can keep these um, because they have these beautiful little sayings along the bottom, I've got a box full of them so <laughs> I keep mine for all my things. So I'm just going to cut that border off and I'm going to leave that for something else another day. Now I want this piece to be cut to 11 and 3 quarters by 11 and 3 quarters. So I'm just going to bring it over to my 11 and 3 quarters over to here. And I'm just going to cut that little bit off there so that it's going to be a tiny bit smaller than that white frame that we just cut out. So I was cutting off about a quarter of an inch there. I'm going to flip it around and do the other side. So we only need to do two sides to cut it down a little bit. So 11 and 3 quarters of an inch trim down there. Awesome. Great. So this one's a little bit smaller now than this frame. So I want you to just go ahead and put some tape along the back of this one and pop it down onto that white frame there. And we're just going to have a little bit of a white border around there. So grab some double-sided tape or glue, whichever you prefer, and just pop that on. I always prefer tape um, when I'm doing stuff like this so that if anything goes wrong I can gently pull it back up and reposition. I use, usually use glue for anything that's going to be moving a lot or is going to have something heavy put on. side. Now I think somewhere in a newsletter or something that we sent out it said that we were doing a little bit of um, stenciling with texture paste. Now I did do that on this one here. I did a little bit there but I did see that when I put the ink over the top you really couldn't see a lot of it so I thought I'm not going to bother with that this time. But you could do that if you wanted to. I've just used a stencil with a bit of everything on it there. A bit of texture paste um, or Oh, what is it? Yeah, texture paste. And pop that on there. And then I've just inked over the top of it when it was dry. But I just didn't think it really gave me the effect I was looking for. So I sort of bypassed that step a little bit. But that is something you can do. Um, it would have maybe looked better with a darker ink on there. Might have shown up the stenciling a wee bit more. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way up this one goes. You can choose... Whoops. You can choose which side you want showing the most. So you're, this side of our paper will be showing more than the other side because as you can see here, we've got more going on on that right side than the left. Okay. All right, so we're going to put that one aside now because we've got that ready to go. And we are now going to cut out our piece of paper. So... If you want to grab your other piece of grey, your lighter grey piece there, which is rosette, we're going to cut that border off and then we're going to go ahead and measure everything and cut it all out. Now, I would normally do this on my trimmer, cut all this out on my trimmer, but I'm going to go through with a ruler and a pencil for those that don't feel confident on their, their trimmer. And doing it with a pen, and a pencil, and a ruler is a little bit longer, but it's um, if you're not feeling confident, that's definitely the safer way of going. <laughs> so we're going to use this as our guide. So our first measurement is going to be one and a quarter by nine. So I'm going to measure one and a quarter down this way, and nine across there. So just use your pencil and a ruler. So one and a quarter down from the top. I'm just going to go across here a bit. Now I'm just going to line up those pencil marks there. So that's my one and a quarter down. Along there. I don't know if you can see that very well. And now I'm going to measure nine inches across this way and do another line. So there's my nine inches there. 
just come down to the bottom of that one there and do another nine inches so I'm going to line those two up now and just match those ones up if I haven't gone far enough okay so that one there is the one and a quarter by nine now I'm just going to do one at a time so I'm going to cut this one out first so we can see exactly how much we've got left over. Normally I would do it with my trimmer and I'd do it all at once but we're just going to go through nice and slow and get it all sorted out. Now you can use your trimmer to cut that out if you want or you can just use your scissors. Now because we're roughing up around the edges of these little pieces in the middle here, if you go slightly askew if you're using your scissors and you don't quite cut it properly don't worry about it because we're actually going to rough them up and it's going to look great <laughs> okay so that one there is our first piece so I'm going to put that right up at the top so I know that's my first piece there okay how's everyone going with that we've only got nine more to go everyone <laughs> you're doing great <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to tick that one so we know we've done that one. So our next one now is one and a half by nine. <coughs> Excuse me. So measure down one and a half. Now we know that up to here is nine inches because that's what we did before. So I'm just going to double check that, draw my line across there at nine inches. Make sure it's nine inches, yep, and then just down there. Okay, so this one we're going to cut out now as well. So either you trim it or your scissors. So I'll use my scissors for this one. So that's our second piece there. So I'm going to put that just under that first one there so we know what we're doing. Awesome. Okay, so that's our second one done. So now we want to do a three and a half by nine. So I'm going to measure down from the top here three and a half inches. So up to three and a half there. And on this side, three and a half. Pull those two pencil marks together. And just make sure it's nine inches again. So we want to bring it to nine inches here. Nine inches. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to cut that one out now. I'll use my scissors because it will take me a little bit longer to do that. That way if I'm going too fast, people can catch up. So... Please let me know if I'm going too fast because I really want you to be able to get the most out of this paper. You could do the same technique with um, scraps of paper. They don't all have to be the same colour. You could just use some scraps that you've got lying around and do some layering and some texturing with that. Awesome. Okay, so that's my next one there. Great. Right, so we've done this one. And we're going to do this big one down the bottom here. So this one we're going to do is seven and a half by five. Now, <coughs> excuse me. So we're going to do seven and a half this way and five down that way. <coughs> so measure seven and a half this way. So right at the top there, seven and a half. We just come down a little bit so we sort of know where seven and a half is there. So I'm just going to line those two up and come to about five there. Okay, so we've got my five inches there and my seven and a half across here. So I'm just going to roll down this side and get five inches again so I can line those two pieces up. There we go. So five across there. Great. Okay, how's everyone going? I hope it's not too stressful for you. We're nearly there. So just cut that one out now as well. Okay. 
if you wanted to just use another different sheet and but still have a bit more color to doing this you could um, alternate between the front and back so you could have one going that way and then flip it over and have another one going that way so you could do all sorts of stuff with this technique and now you've got your cutting guide and we've gone through it you'll understand how to get it done <coughs> okay so we've done the seven and a half by five so we've just got these little ones to go now so hopefully you've got enough to do two and a half by four so I'm going to do two and a half inches across here and make a pencil mark so two and a half inches there and I'll come down about four so I'm just going to sort of eyeball <coughs> excuse me I'm just going to eyeball with I think four might be match those two pencil marks up so that's your two and a half inches there yeah I'm just going to measure down about four inches so it was pretty close but not quite so bring it to four inches there so measure down this side at four inches and then we're going to meet the two up <coughs> Right, so two and a half inches by four. So go ahead and cut that one out. <coughs> Sorry about my croaky voice this morning. Don't think I've yelled at Michael enough to get my voice going this morning. <laughs> okay, so there's our, our another piece there. Great, you guys are doing so well. Well done. I'm just going to flip it back this way. I'm actually going to cut this tiny little piece off because we actually don't need that and it's just getting in my way. So that can go in the bin. All right, so we've done that one there. Now we want to do a one and a half by three. So this should now measure three inches across here. Yep, so I just want to come down one and a quarter inches. So one and a quarter inches on both sides there. Draw a line between the two. And this will measure three inches across here. So go ahead and cut that one out. Don't worry if your cutting's not 100% straight because we are going to rough it up and it doesn't, you won't even notice. Okay, so that one there's done. So I now want to do the one and a quarter by three. So again, remember this is three inches across here, so we don't need to worry about measuring that. But we do need to come down one and a quarter down. Oh, did I do one and a half or one and a quarter? Sorry, do this one at one and a half. So sorry, I've just got those two around the other way. So just come to one and a half there. And one and a half there. And just draw those two lines together at three inches. There we go. Awesome. So just go ahead and cut that little piece out there. So this one, this one was one and a half by three. I'm sorry, I got my two little box measurements around the wrong way, but it doesn't matter. We just carry on. Here we go. All right, so we need to get three more pieces out. So pop it up this way. Now I want to get this one here out. So this one is two and a, half, two and a quarter by four and a half. Now I want to go across this way at four and a half. Which should be exactly the right amount. So it should be four and a half across this way. Now I want to come down two and a quarter. Two and a quarter? Yes, two and a quarter. So both sides again at two and a quarter. And just marry those two together and just make sure this is four and a half yep so just cut along that line there and that's our four and a half by two and a quarter two more to go guys you're doing so well here we go right so that one there is done so now we just need two pieces measuring one and a half by two so I'm going to do, we'll go down one and a half first. So down to one and a half. Draw that line between the two marks. Okay, 
That's it. And then I'm going to come to two inches across here. There. And another two inches, which makes it four there. So two and four inches. Two inches. And then four. Draw your line between those two. And then the last two to cut out. And then you can take a breather. <laughs> There we go. So we're just going to cut those two pieces out there. Awesome. Okay, so that's as much as we've got left. I might use that to do some more rolling pieces. So I might... See, so these, these two pieces here are going to be some rolled pieces there, but if they're not quite big enough, long enough, we can use this piece here. So don't throw that away just yet. Just put that aside. All right, so you should have 10 pieces there. We can put our cutting guide away now. Well done, everybody. That was a huge thing to do, especially when I'm teaching it and I think, oh, if I do something wrong, nobody's going to have another piece of paper. <laughs> All right, so what we want to do now is just have a bit of a breather and relax, and we want to rough around the edges of all these pieces here. So I'm just going to use my scissors. If you have um, a distress tool, go ahead and use that. That's absolutely fine. If you don't, like I don't have one at the moment, just go ahead and use your scissors to rough up those edges around there like that. If you don't like the roughed up edge look, don't have to do it. It's all good. You can start... Um, you can carry on with the instructions and start putting them together if you like. So just roughing up around those edges. This is where you get lots of little snowy pieces on the ground. My poor mother has to try vacuum them all up. <laughs> So you've got 10 of these pieces to do, so just go ahead. Don't don't be too stressed about how much or how little is being roughed up. Just go around the edges. If you rip it, like sometimes if you're using your scissors, you might rip it a little bit. Don't worry about it. We can just work with that. So we just want it to look a little bit roughed up and shabby chic. So if you rip your paper, please don't worry about it. It's all part of the look. Okay, so that's one there. Let's go ahead and do the rest. You could have some roughed up and some um, not roughed up if you want to have that look. You could use both sides. Um, when I designed this one, I just really wanted everyone to be able to see that they can get quite a lot out of one paper. And you can still work with scraps if you've got them. You can work with both sides of your paper. You can keep it pretty plain. I just love that sort of layering technique. I think it just gives a real good dimension to a page without the bulkiness. Okay, eight to go. <laughs> If you want to as well, you can ink around the outside of these if you wanted to give it a bit more of a pop on your page. Um, vintage photo, Distress Ink Vintage Photo is always a really good go-to colour for any sort of scrapbooking. If you want to ink around the edges instead of roughing it up um, the same colour that you'll do your inking on the background, go for it. It'll look awesome. So there's lots of different ways you can do this page. You could even not put the flowers on, make it a guide page if you want to. Um, if, while, I'm, while we're doing this, if you've got some good glue, can you just make sure you've got that with you because I, we're putting quite big flowers onto our scrapbook page. So you're going to need a really good glue to put that down. And we also need um, double-sided tape as well, which you should have with you.
If you've got pencil lines on there like I have, um, roughing up the edges will probably get rid of that. But if you like, if you want to rub those out, go ahead and do that. Doing really well, everyone. Hopefully we can start our classes up really, really soon because I'm missing everybody a lot. I've seen a few people come through the shop and it's been wonderful catching up with you all. Nearly there. She might just rub that piece off because it's quite a thick one there. That's a bit better. Don't forget if you haven't got your color, your ink color with you now, don't worry. You can do that um, after you've done your page. Um, if you do decide to do it later, I would just use a finger dauber, which is one of the. Oh, I shall go and find one and show you. So a finger dauber is just one of these, so you stick it on your finger and you just put your ink on there and then you can get quite precise measure, precise inking done there. So that's really great if you wanted to do precise inking. Um, I'm just going to use a sponge just because I want a bigger area done because I've got my, my colour that I want. I can go ahead and do it that way now. So the sponge I use for bigger areas and to get a lot more done, the finger dauber I use if I'm trying to pinpoint specific areas or we'll just have small areas to do. Okay, three to go. You're nearly there. <laughs> I'm just going to rub that one there off. It's a bit dark for my liking. Two more. Great job, everybody. Yep, so see how I ripped that? Don't even worry about it. It's part of the shabby chic look. Okay, one to go. Awesome. Okay, I hope you've all got those done. So you should have all ten pieces done now. Alright, so we're just going to start putting this together now. I'm just going to get rid of my fluffy bits. All right, so I'm just going to use my instructions so you can see what I'm up to now. So first of all, grab your backing paper here. If you're going to do your inking now, I would do that right now. So I'm going to do mine. I've used um, Distress Ink Bundled Sage. And I'm just going to use my sponge. So I'm just going to rub on some ink on there. And I'm not going to think about this too hard. I am just going to give it a little bit of colour. I just wanted a bit more colour on there than just that grey. So I'm just going to do it in random spaces. So if you can see on here, I'm sort of going to have a space here and a bit more out there and down the bottom here and I might do a little bit up in that corner too. So we're just going to sort of see, you know, eyeball a little bit about where everything's going to go. 
and I don't want my colour to be too dark because I just want it to have a bit of a subtle colour on there. So I'm not going to do any of this middle piece just because it's been covered over with lots of other bits. So if you're doing your inking a bit later, you can um, leave this part for now. But I would use the finger dauber because you can get very precise in on the more sort of fiddly places like this. So you can get a bit more precision in there. Okay, so that's what the finger dauber is for. So, but I'm just doing big spaces, so I just want to get in there with my sponge and get it done. <laughs> I find the Distress Inks quite good for subtle colours if you don't want anything too bright or in your face. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So if you can see, I've just sort of done around the outside a little bit. So I'm just going to pop my ink away now. And now we're going to put it all together. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is this longer, fatter one. So that's this one here. So if you want to grab this one, which was the three and a half by nine, I think. Yep. So grab your three and a half by nine, pop some tape or glue around the outside there, and we're going to pop that into the center of our layout. Great. So it doesn't matter which way up you put it, we're just going to sort of put it a bit more to the right hand side than the left. So I'm going to line it up, eyeball it from the top and the bottom. Just It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I just want maybe, how many inches? That's about two and a half inches from the side there. So I'm just going to stick that down there. So that's our first piece. So we're going to go to number six and we're just going to do that next one there. So that next one is this big piece here so this one was the one that measured five by seven and a half so five by seven and a half put some tape or glue around the back of that one Okay, so all around there. I only put that little bit in the middle just because I had some little bit of leftover stuff, so you don't have to do the middle piece. There we go. Okay, so this piece now is going to go here. So I want it to be quite close to this right hand side. Yeah, see it alright? And I want it to be sort of have a little bit of this left over so we can see it there so that's going to be even from the top and the bottom as well great see that okay there awesome okay so we need to go to number seven now and we're going to do this little piece here so that little piece is this one here so that one is the one that measures hang on, let me just check uh, it was the two and the quarter by four and a quarter. So that's the two and a half. So it's this one here. So the two and a quarter by four and a quarter. Four and a half, sorry. So two and a quarter by four and a half. <laughs> so that one's our next one. So flip it over and put your tape on the back. Don't forget when you've done your layouts, we love to see what you've done on our Craft Amenities page. You guys have done such amazing stuff on there. I'm really impressed. And I love seeing what you've done. Okay, so this piece here is going to go more to this side now. So I'm going to pop it in the center and just have a little gap between the two there. And just pop that down there. Okay, great.
Right, so you're now up to number eight. So number eight is the two and a half by four. Nope, sorry, it's the one and a half by nine. So it's this one here. So the one and a half by nine inches. That one is going to go right between the two there. So just pop some tape on the back of that one. I don't know if you can hear it, but I've got a really noisy truck out the back, so I'm very sorry for the noise. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so that one's going to go down now. There we are. Right, so this one is going to go a little bit more to the top. We're going to cover up that gap in the middle there, and I'm going to line it up with the bottom of this one here. There we go. So I'm just lining that with the bottom one here, and I'm going to push that down so it's nice and straight. There we go. Okay, so we've got four pieces on. We've just got six to go. All right, so the next piece we want is our two and a half by four piece. So two and a half by four, so this little piece here. And we're going to pop that one. So I'm just going to flip my instructions over. We're going to pop that one about the center there. So a little bit to the top with about an, a half an inch around the outside there. So pop some tape or glue on the back of that one. Okay, oops. All right, so that one's going to go a little bit more to the top, so I want it to be about half, about half an inch. You don't need to measure, it's just eyeballing really. And we're just going to have about half an inch on that side as well. So pop that piece down, whoops, went off skew a bit. Pop that piece down there, great. Right, so our next piece is going to be our one and a quarter by nine, so it's going to be this red piece here. So you're one and a quarter by nine, so it'll be your last one that you've got left, your last long one that you've got left. I'm going to go ahead and pop that on too. There it is. So this one's going to go along there. So we're just going to cover up the bottom of that piece a little bit. So it's going to go long ways this way. Great. So that one's going to go just a little bit further that way. So about a quarter of, quarter of an inch from that first pattern paper there. And go right across. Awesome, you guys have done so well. Really, really good job, everybody. Okay, so now we're going to do these rolling pieces here. So in your kit, you will have a little piece of dowel like this. So this is what we're going to use to roll all these last little four pieces here. So what I'm going to do is on the back of one of them, I'm going to put a bit of tape right up against that very, very edge there. So it's going to be really close to the edge like that and I'm not going to put any anywhere else yep that's right so what we're going to do is we're just going to roll that take the tape off the back of that one so this is all sticky now and ready to go so we're just going to roll this one around that doweling until we get to the very end and that tape is just going to stick down on there like that and we can pull that out so that's one of our rolls there so if you want to go ahead and do the other three So tape right along the back of one long side, right up against the edge there. Take the backing off, and then we're just going to roll it around our doweling. So I just sort of, to break that, sort of the texture in the paper, the thread in the paper, we're just going to sort of roll it backwards and forwards a little bit just to get it started, and then we're going to tuck it underneath as hard as we can, 
and just keep rolling until you get to the end and stick it down. Okay, so that one can come off there. All right, so these are the two tiny ones we're going to do. So again, a bit of tape along the very long side, right up against the edge there. Take the backing off. And just break the fibres in your paper by rolling it backwards and forwards just so that it gets a bit of um, curvature to it there. And then we're just going to tuck it under as hard as we can and then just roll it until we get to that end again. How are you going? Doing all right? Awesome. So there's our third one and the last one. So you want to start rolling from the opposite side of your tape. So just roll back and forwards a little bit just to break the fibres in the paper. Tuck it under and give it a really good rolling around. And stick it down. Great job everyone. Awesome. Okay, so hopefully you've got four of those done. I'll just give you a, a, like an extra few seconds just while I clean up a bit to get those finished. Okay. All right, so now the fun part. Now we get to stick everything together. So with these three, with these four here, what I want you to do is just grab, just grab four of them, three of them. We're just going to stick these together with a bit of glue just to hold them in place while we do our, so we're going to be doing this little bit here. So we just want to put a little bit of twine around there. So we're just going to sort of tack these together a little bit. Make sure that that, closure pieces underneath so we don't see that so I'm just going to put a bit of glue along the side stick that one to it a wee bit just like that so you've sort of got the longer one a little bit up and down from the smaller one and then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the middle and pop this one over the top now if you want to do the what I've done here and do those little notches all you do is you just Grab that piece there and you're just going to cut it on a bit of an angle like that. So that'll give you that edging look there. Okay, so just on a bit of an angle. So that one's just going to go in the centre there. So you can cut these ones again if you like. There we go. Awesome, so those three should be sort of tacked together now. So I'm just going to grab my twine and I'm just going to tie a little bow, a little bit of uh, a knot and a bow around the bottom of that piece there. There we go. So make sure those those little um, these little pieces here, these little joins here aren't showing. It keeps flipping over on me. <laughs> There we go. So just tie a knot and then a bow if you want to there. There we go. Oh, that was Mike sneezing. Bless you, Mike. <laughs> oh, what have I done here? Just want to tie a bow. Oh, more fingers this morning. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to pull the tails a little bit backwards and forwards just to make it a wee bit smaller there. Now you can keep it long like that if you want to, or you can cut those bits off. I'm just going to cut mine off a little bit. There we go. Right, so this piece here, we're going to put those aside for now. Now we're going to go back and take this one here that we cut out from the centre before. Now I've cut my piece to be six and a quarter by four and a quarter, so it's a little bit bigger than a six by four photo. So if you want to Grab your trimmer and cut it down to six and a quarter by four and a quarter. So you'll have more left over to do a couple of other smaller photos if you want to. I'm just going to stick to one for today.
Okay, so this piece here, I'm going to use a bit of fine tape. So I want it standing up a little bit off my page like that. So that's where your photo is going to go. So this is a 6x4 photo. So grab some foam tape if you have it there. And just pop some around all four sides. And then I also do a few in the middle if I've got the smaller tape there. Just so it doesn't sag in the middle. bit at the bottom there. Oops, run out. Just going to grab some more. There we go. Now I do put a bit in the center just so it doesn't sag so that when you've got your photo on there it's not going to sag it down in the middle. Great, so that piece now goes right in the middle of all of those. You're doing really well everybody, you're doing really, really well. A lot of thinking today. Okay, so pop that one in the centre. Awesome. Okay, so now these pieces that we've just done before, they can just glue down the bottom side of this photo mat. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue on the back there. And I'm just going to pop that down the side of my photo. She might bring it down a wee bit more. So it just comes down a little bit from your photo mat there. Awesome! Okay, so this one I'm going to cut on an angle again just so that I've got... No, I've done that the wrong way, sorry. That way. There we go. So this piece here is going to go up the top here, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue that bit there. Okay, so I'm not going to put it too far up, just a little way. Just so it comes above your photo mat a little bit. Awesome. Well done, guys. You're doing so well. I'm so impressed. Okay, now comes the fun part of decorating. So in your kits, you'll also have a piece of this chicken wire. Mine's a little bit bent and horrible, but yours will be fine. So just we're just going to cut little bits of this up. So don't think about it too much. You just want little bits like that. So this one I'm going to pop up here. So I'm going to glue that one there. Uh, so we need about four little pieces off this. So don't think about it too much. Just go ahead and cut. Here we go. So there's another piece there. I'm going to pop that sort of around that bit there. So I want another little bit here and a little bit there. So that one I'm going to pop next to there. So it's going to go underneath my flowers. And my last piece I'm just going to have a little bit down there. So just a little bit. There we go. So I'm just going to stick mine back. No, actually I might pull that off altogether. <laughs> okay, so that one's going to go sort of about there. So glue those down. So one up in this corner here. Oh, you can do another little bit down here if you've got some left over. So I didn't see that bit there. There we go. So I've just cut a little bit there and I'm going to pop that one down that side as well. So go and glue those down. So this one's going to go about there. I'm going to pop this one down just at the top of my photo mat there. So it lines up with my photo mat top. Okay, so just there like that. Okay, so these three here are going to come down as well. So I might just bring that one out a little bit. Just make sure my flowers, you can still see it from my flowers, yep. If you're not confident just gluing these down, just use your flowers as a guide to where 
everything's going to go. Okay. All right, so the last two we're going to stick down as well. Bring that one up about there. And our last one down the bottom here, I'm going to stick down just along the side of our little rolled pieces there. And there we go. So just down. Actually, I might get rid of this little bit at the top so I can even it up along the bottom there. That's better. Great. Good job, everybody. So you should have five pieces on there now. Great. Right, so now I'm going to stick my flowers down. So you will have some of these greeny ones there. If the green ones aren't going to work with your photo, um, just don't worry about putting those on. Just find something that will go with your photo a bit better. These white ones are the same as these ones, but you can, if you want to, you can colour these with a spray or just a bit of rub a bit of ink over the top to match your photo. So I'm just going to cut these little stems off the back there so they sit a bit flatter. Okay, so now I'm just going to put a ton of glue on these pieces. So we'll start at the top here. So I'm going to have one of my greeny blue ones there. Put a ton of glue on so they stick well. And then just pop it down there. Now because they're pla we're gluing plastic, it will take a few moments to actually stick. So I'm going to take a white one now and I'm going to pop that there. Just so we can see a little bit of our chicken wire coming out the top there. So a bit more glue on. And just tuck it under there a wee bit. Great. Okay, so there are the two there with a little bit of the chicken wire from the top and the bottom. So we're going to go and do this side now so I'm just going to grab one of my blue ones my green ones put some glue on the back again and that one's going to go nice up against there they will take a little while to dry on here so just once they're down don't fiddle around with them too much just let them dry there this one I'm going to pop down there like that So that one's going to go down there. That's it. And my last one, my last white one's going to go here. Awesome. Okay, so just we'll just leave those to dry there. And then we're just going to put our little flowers in between. So these little flowers are basically just to cover up anything that we've made a gap on. So I'm just going to tuck, cut the back off these. Now some people might have a slightly bigger flower in their kit. That's perfectly fine. Just carry on and stick them in the places that you want to just cover up a bit of blank space there. So I'm going to put one here and one here. So I'm just going to cover that blank space there. And another one down the bottom here. Just down there. I like to tuck my little flowers under my bigger flowers just so they look like they're poking out a little bit. Great. Awesome. Okay, so now we've just got our little little other little flowers that we've got here. So if you want to, you can twirl the little stem around a pokey tool or, a, or something that's a little bit thin. And you can or even use this actually if you want to do a little bit of a twirl on there, just wrap it around, and then it gives you just that little bit there as well. So this one I'm going to pop there. So I'm going to glue that down. And this one here I'm just going to do in this little corner just down here. So I might wrap that one as well.
right, so just down there. Awesome. Great job, everybody. So the last thing we want to do is put our little leaves on. So you can basically put your leaves wherever ever you've got a few gaps to fill in. Or you can um, follow what I do. I'm just going to sort of pop mine in where I don't want gaps showing, so I might pop one there. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that one. So I might, actually might just put that one there. Like that. So you've got about, I think you've got maybe seven of these little leaves, I think, all together. So you can put in as many or as little as you want. So I've actually got a bit of a gap here, I don't know if you can see, where I've got a little bit of my um, circular thing showing. So I actually want to cover that up. So I'm going to pop one of these little ones on there so I can cover up that gap. So I'm just going to stick it onto there. Like that. Oops, didn't put enough glue on there. There we go. So that's going to cover up that little gap there. I might put one coming down under my little flower here. So I'll pop that one down there. So I don't know if everyone can see. So that one's going to trail under my little white flower there. I'm going to pop one there so it's covering over my photo a little bit. Now I haven't glued up the top here because I want to pop my photo underneath it so I didn't glue it down so your photo could go under there. Right, so this one here I might pop coming out this way along there. Daisy. Here we go. So we've got two of these bigger ones left. So if you've got any spaces you want to fill up again, so I might pop one there and I might pop one there. So that one's just going to tuck under my flowers there. And this one here, I'm just going to pop under those flowers. There we are. Beautiful. You're all done. Good job, everybody. You could pop a title up here if you want to and do a bit of journaling down here. That would look really nice with a nice title up here. I didn't quite get around to that bit, but you can do your own title there. Um, don't forget that if you haven't done your inking around here, you can go ahead and do that with a finger dauber now. You can just use your finger dauber to give those little extra bits of colour there. You could match that up with the photo that you're going to use. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. You've done such a great job. That was quite an intense one there for a while, trying to get all that cutting out done. So next week's one we've got here is a bit like a travel one. So you could use it as a travel one. You could use it as a guy one. It's totally up to you. So we've cut all these circle bits out for you. So we've got some sewing on there, um, some brads, a bit of stamped bit, some uh, staples there but the fun thing is is that these little turn mounts here fold out and then we've got our photos in the center here so you can fit one two three four five photos on there and then it all just folds up again so I'll show you how to pop that into a page protector as well and then the little photo mounts just fold down again and they keep it closed so that's next week's one. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. I hope you managed to get your page done. Don't forget to upload it onto our um, Craft Communities Facebook page because we would love to see your finished projects. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next week. Bye.